Uh, because we live in Pittsburgh, I figured we might as well just go into a, a whole section on steel as well, so you know what steel actually is and the different types of steel out there. So this is going to be under our section for alloys. Um, we do have different types of steel. Steel is great because it's strong, it's hard, and it resists the corrosion. It doesn't like to rust or break down. Uh, but not all steels are alike. Um, so you do get a lot of different properties with the same elements, just in different ratios of the mixture. For example, you can have carbon steel, which is going to be an extremely strong and durable steel, uh, which has a high um, amount of carbon, relatively speaking, uh, to iron in it. Or you can get like a wrought iron type deal, which is what this gate is made out of. You've probably seen fences and stuff made out of wrought iron, which is kind of uh, more malleable. You can make different shapes out of it easier, so you do tend to get the artsy look for it. But it also is very weak compared to carbon steel, so you don't see people building houses out of wrought iron, but you do see them using like carbon steel I-beams to make uh, really big skyscrapers and stuff. Um, so we do have high carbon steels. High carbon steels does not mean that much carbon, but relative to low carbon steels, it's a lot. So here we are with like 0 0.6 to 1.5% carbon. That's not a lot of carbon, relatively speaking, but or, um, compared to like the whole thing, it's mostly iron still. But these are your high carbon steels. You're going to use them for tools, knives, and springs. I mean, if you think about it, this tool here, a pair of pliers, could be used to bend lower carbons of steels. So we need to have a tool that's stronger than the material we're working with in order to actually uh, drill a hole into it or bend it into a different shape. Um, high carbon steels are used a lot in springs because they don't bend as easily in springs as long as you don't stretch them out too much and bend them all around, remain and keep their tension so they last longer as carbon steels. You also have things like low carbon steels. Um, this is like less than 0.2% carbon. These are the steels that are very malleable and ductile. Uh, you can think of like nails. Whenever I take a hammer and hit a nail, I need that nail to deform itself into that wood to grab onto it. So I need it to actually kind of bend inside that wood, kind of fan out and grip the wood, or else the nail doesn't really work too much. Uh, you can think of cables, like bridge cables or something. They need to be very ductile so I can pull them into wires and have them uh, use, use those as uh, suspension on my uh, suspension bridges. Or you can think of some chains because I need to be able to move things around and wrap wrap the uh, coils around the, around the chain in order to make it actually a chain. So I gotta bend the links. Uh, those are examples of low carbon steels. Um, you do have other alloys besides steels we can touch on uh, real quick at the end of the video here. Uh, we've already covered bronze a bit. Uh, you also get brasses. Brass would be a steel. You see a lot of instruments made out of brass. Uh, you get sterling silver, which they make a lot of jewelry out of. Uh, you get solder, which is this spule up here. Solder is used to actually kind of... Um, to stick wires together and different electrical components together to make circuits. Uh, you get amalgam, which actually is not used anymore because it used to have mercury in it. Uh, but amalgam was used for different tooth fillings back in the day. So if you see uh, an older person that has kind of a filling that looks like this, not that you go around looking at people's fillings, but that's amalgam in there and that is another alloy.